değerli konuşmacılar, distinguished participants and esteemed panelists, I would like to welcome all of you to the Turkish Wind Energy Congress. First of all, I would like to thank to Turkish Wind Energy Association and all the sponsors. This is the last session of the first day, and we will be talking about local content for the wind energy. Our esteemed panelists will help us, but if you let me say some words. My name is Fatih Dönmez. I am a member in the EMRA, and I am an electrical engineer. Since 2008, I am I have been working as a member in the Embram board. I started my professional life as a research and development engineer. That's why I'm very excited to be in front of you in this panel, because for many years our professors, industrialist men, and the gover governors, government members, they researched for many things, for um, bringing the country in a better position. But everything, as you all know, lies on research and development. Turkey, unfortunately, in terms of research and development expenses, when we compare to European Union countries and United States and Japan, we are very lagging behind from these countries. GDP is very uh, low in Turkey. Turkey is allocating its 2 or 3 percent of its GDP to the, the R&D uh, part. But in the last year, with the support of Turkey's scientific board, this number has increased up to 1 percent. It was a very low, all or one per mile it used to be like this. In the energy uh, department, unfortunately, we cannot say there have been bright uh, developments. For the last two years, R&D allocation for energy is almost all of five per mile in Turkey in general uh, allocations. Normally for each five years we do have four or five billion energy investments, therefore hydraulic plants and other energy plants in construction, excluding the construction part, we can say that there is a serious amount of import material. Therefore we cannot say that we are only dependent on energy. We are also dependent on foreign countries in terms of energy shifting materials. Of course, the energy uh, usage um, policies are also including this. And there are certain precautions in the scope, renewable energy law, and there is a local content for this uh, law. If all these plants and facilities can be completed, installed in Turkey, we can say that there is going to be a 50 or 60 percent benefit advantage in terms of procurement. We do have certain guests here from the public authority and academy and also industry. When we listen to their presentations, we will learn a lot from them. They will have 15 minutes each, and in the last 15 minutes, we will have question and answer session. The first speech will be given by Dr. Osman Sevaioglu. I would like to welcome him again, and I would like to um, tell you about him. Mr. Sevaioglu was graduated in Middle East Technical University in 1979, and in the same department, he completed his master and doctorate grades. After his education, 
he worked as a chairman of planning coordination and he worked as a head department in Hajatepe University Electric Electronical Engineering and Middle East Technical University Electrical Engineering Department and he became a member of Embram in 2002 and then after his retirement he uh, went back to his old position in Middle East Technical University. His main domain that he has worked is electricity transmission and distribution, liberalization, and he wrote many papers and articles. Between 79 and 99, he was head of Metroelectric Electronical Engineering Department, and he was vice president of electrical liberalization commission in 2002. He was rewarded in EE Outstanding Engineering Award. He is still in the position of Department Middle East Technical University, the Electrical Engineering Department. So he will be given certain information about local content in wind plants. So dear, dear, dear uh, chairman, thank you very much. I don't know how much of your attention I can grasp at this time of today, but I will try to do my best. Uh, we are talking about an extremely important subject. Maybe as much as electricity generation, maybe even more important. And if you want, I'm going to say the last sentence as a starter. The thing, the subject that we will be discussing here today is in Ostim, in Sinjan, organized uh, industrial zone in Ikiteli. There are many workers and there are many families, uh, their families waiting for an income. So all the apprentices and all the uh, assistant workers, uh, this will help them get an employment, get uh, make their living. And uh, therefore, local production is a must. So I started with my last sentence. Second most important topic is We have been talking about liberalism, competition, free market, and this is the European Union that is giving us advice on these topics, but the European it's Union itself is uh, a hypocrite. And with the European loans, they are allocating uh, funds to many countries. One of them is the Northern Republic, uh, Turkish Republic of Northern Cyprus. And they are uh, imposing a prerequisite of European uh, make uh, European uh, products. There is only if there is just one U.S. printer, the, a company may be excluded or expelled from a tender. We should be honest. We should see what is being done to us, to the poor people of this country, people waiting for bread at home, the apprentices, people living in the back streets of the industrial zones, and their future is dependent on this, on the outcome of this meeting. About local production, the ministry first has passed a law, and then it was followed by Uh, the uh, code number uh, 6094 and then the uh, US sent prices to be given for these parts for these components those are the incentive values uh, followed by there were two uh, regulations that were issued one was addressing the renewable energy resources and the components it is the regulations on the local production of the uh, components of the renewable energy equipment that was a part of the law number 6094 and uh, then 
the other regulation was the regulation amending the first one that was on July, 2000, July 26, 2012. Uh, there, there are many imp imposed provisions. There are many sanctions. For example, if a chartered accountant is not working properly, he is to receive such and such penalties. Or if you do not submit your local production certificates, or uh, uh, he is going to be subject to such and such sanctions. But what really matters, because all these are just adjustments and amendments. But what matters is, let me tell it in the beginning, what does the regulation says? Listen to me carefully. I'm requesting you. Uh, local components. If the local components and integral parts, whichever, whatever that means, because that says integral parts, and their rates, at least 55% of them should be manufactured in the country with added value. So please listen to me carefully. If you use, if your plant uses in this beautiful country, in this poor country, with uh, Austin uh, Industrial Zone apprentices, if that plant has a local content less than 55%, they do not accept it. They say, go elsewhere. I don't accept it. It has to be 55%. This is what they say. So this is draft. This could be drafted by someone who has never seen a wind turbine in his life. How, what is the length of the nozzle? What is the transformer? What are the electric components? If he has never seen such things in his life, such a person can draft it. But uh, uh, the, the, if the, the sector is very well conversant with this, they had to be very strict. The sector should be raged when they saw such such a regulation. They should say, what do you mean 55%? They, you sh not one person among you stood up and said, what do you mean 55%? How can I come up with 55% local content? Certain drafts are being written in closed behind closed doors, you are not informed. Universities are not informed because they are just theoreticians. And the sector is not informed either. So at the end, you receive this draft, and it is almost hit on your head. So they just throw it at you. They just tell you to notify your opinions about the draft in 15 days, and you receive it by electronic communication. and you. Let me tell you what they do with those opinions. They just fold it, uh, bend it, they put it in packages and place it on a nice shelf, that's all. So they don't look at it, they don't check it, don't worry. No matter what you say, how much you object, that is the law. You know, a person should have consciousness. What do you mean 55% local content? Just think about it. The entire plant you are to manufacture with the Turkish, with the means affordable you have in Turkey. Imagine Renault or imagine other automobiles like Toyota. Did they start with 55% when they started manufacturing in Turkey? The Turkish automotive industry, did they start with 55% or with mere installation? Tell me. Now, dear brethren, this is not an incentive. This is just for this is an action, a rule introduced, a, pr a barrier introduced by foreign turbine producers so that they make sure no turbines are produced in Turkey. And I want to emphasize how serious this is. I'm going to give you a figure and I won't talk long. Now, until the year 2020, they say they are going to be uh, building 19,500 megawatt capacity wind turbines. Right now it's 3,500. Could be 1,500. And that corresponds to 56 billion Turkish liras. 23 billion dollars US, sorry, 23 billion euros 
which corresponds to 56 billion Turkish liras. Now, my dear brothers, what do you know what 56 billion Turkish liras means? I'm, I'm a professor at the Middle Eastern Turkish uh, University. I also worked at the Energy Market Regulatory Authority. And 56 billion Turkish liras equals. We built the Northern Cyprus campus for 450 million US dollars. So with that amount of money, you can build 69 universities. So if that local contribution, local content, if that does not start in Turkey, that means those 69 uh, universities money, you will be giving that to foreigners. So you need to be smart. You need to fight and combat against this 55%. This is not possible. Thank you. Thank you so much for this um, great uh, presentation of our professor. I think Mr. Sabatin has taken his notes about the renewable energy regulation with regards to local content. Um, regulations, I think he will kindly answer these questions. And second presentation will be given by Dr. Sedat Celikton. And if you allow me, I will try to give his resume. In 1943, he was born in Manisa and he was graduated from Istanbul Technical University Mechanical Engineering Department. In the same university, he completed his master's and doctorate degree. Istanbul Technical University and Sakarya University was the places that he worked as a um, lecturer and he worked for government and he worked in Satem Strategic Research Center. He was the head of this research center. He was the coordinator of R&D resources and he worked for HEMA coordination, Tubitak Research Court, uh, Turkish Engine Industrial Association, and he worked in the project Mintrest National Wind Resource Energy Project of Ministry. He has many articles published in national and international areas. He knows English and German, and he is married with four children. Mr. Celikton will give certain information about Milres project. Yes, esteemed participants, I would like to salute all of you with my all respect. Our professor has um, extended his many uh, criticisms. Of course, criticizing is not sufficient. We will add some things to him. Is. Our professor is very sad about the situation of country, but I will try to give two solution recommendations. We will try to look at the um, energy installations per year. You have heard this. You can see we do have 1,920 uh, or 2,000 is our installed power in the upcoming days. In line with the objectives of 2023, it will be increased to 2,200 megawatt. I will try to mention Milres project, which is the National Wind Energy Project. Inside this project, if you go into local project, the most important thing is that the weight, because the gearbox and generators are really um, heavy and the tower and the basics, they are also the uh, heavy parts. You have seen the regulations and local content. Maybe you have seen the financial solutions of those regulations, but I will try to give the financial and technical parts of the regulations. There could be new developments, and new developments will be in line with decreasing the weight of this. There is going to be new aluminum and P magnets and with these materials these gearboxes will be 
reduced in terms of weight if you exclude gearboxes and if you shift into direct drive it is going to be um, not very heavy that much however we will try to work on the gearbox system a professor a, G a german professor norbert goschmann has developed this this generator weight is going to be reduced we worked on this but in our project in pro in Tubitak, however, our finance was not sufficient for it. That's why we put it off to, for later works. But we are still following this. As you can see, the design as yes, the generators weight will be decreased and gearbox is not going to be used. That's as a result of this, all the heavy part of the material is going to be reduced. As a result of 2010 Turkish uh, actual accounts, you can see this has increased to 77.1 billion. And the current deficit, 70.2%, is the energy import. And 51% of the current deficits of Turkey is coming from energy, electricity needs. For that reason, we have a new project, and this is offset local content. We are fighting against this. We are trying to solve this problem with this new offset law. If we are going to be eligible to issue this law, this is not only be about renewable energy, this will affect all the sectors of energy, also medical devices and pharmaceutical devices and automotive parts and all the complementary parts these are going to be included in the scope of offset different ministries came together and this draft is uh, completed and it was brought to the ministry prime ministry but there is a problem in this offset however there is an inhibition here and uh, there, is, there are certain lobbies who want to inhibit the developments of this. Offset is very important for us because our aim is to produce the complementary parts at least 50% in Turkey, but this is not our first solution. Our first choice and solution is to make productions in Turkey, not the spare parts or the complementary parts. Yes, offset. What does it mean? Offset has certain categories. You can see there are three categories. The um, work share for the local content and export in the product and service. So you are producing your products and there is a local content and offset. Other countries are implementing offset. Also the United States is doing the same thing. And the Secretary of Defense is doing offset. They have certain projects for the tanks. We have given our offer in the bid for the engine also. So the offset is used in these procurements. These countries that you can see here, the United States, Israel, Hungary, Malaysia, they are all using this implementation. What does it mean? What is offset? Other countries are coming to your products, but you need to ask this. Yes, you want to come in, come into this market, but you are saying that I'm giving my market to you. Your power, your strength is your market. So you need to make the 50% of this job. How will you do this? We did the same thing before. With the directions of our prime minister, we behaved very strictly in terms of offset. And as a result of all these studies, Boeing, Miniba, uh, Airbus, and all other aircrafts, we did the offset. And what did they say to us? You need to produce aircraft components. And everything was 
becoming complex, but there was a crisis in that point, and these orders become very important, and Thai Turkish uh, aerospace institution get over this job from us. They control the parts and certify these parts. And in Austin, the organizational industrial zone, we can see an industry part. At those times, Taim has a $101 billion deal, but within three years, this deal increased its value, and this agreement is still continuing. There are certain components of Airbus beside this. If you go to Taim, and you can see this, it extends the components, the parts, only for an aircraft parts, there are many productions because there is only one need requirement, the smart and strict behavior of the government. We worked a lot at those times, oh, how and where can we produce? But the thing that you can do right now is that there is nothing that you can think everything is ready because everyone wants you to produce something. All these offsets are in a valid position right now. We do have a rail uh, uh, project for Ankara subway. There are and there is a need for 32 rolling stock units. And this is actually the first time in Turkish history because it is against the tender law. The percentage is 51. This company, the local content offset companies, they do have certain companies, branches in the United States and the Germany as well. They said that we got the over, we get the bid with the United States company and the Germany with Siemens with other uh, companies. So uh, the United States says that if you do not produce your products in the United States, you cannot produce it in your country. All the projects are unfortunately are not placed in a low um, text. Prime Minister has given certain decrees in order to produce in a local manner, but it is not sufficient. There is a need for law code. The draft is ready. It's about to be issued. Yes, it is going to be enacted very soon. When you finish all of this uh, issuing stuff, the thing that you need to do is to exporters. We need to have some exporters and entrepreneurs among us. You can see this is 2023 objectives. These are official records. When you go out of this official records, you can see actually this is more than this number. You can see total local content is $100 billion and $35 billion in information technologies. In transportation, we can see $45 billion. In energy, we can see $47.5 billion. But actually, this is more than this. If you exclude local content, it should be 50%. And it is equal to $95 billion. And it is coming from the energy side. In the wind turbines, some parts are excluded. I'm changing and skipping from one subject to another, but there is an implementation here. First, the components come, the vehicles received, but for that reason, we took more than 50 years. So this is the process. Yes place this channel, place that, but you cannot do this all of a sudden. In the automotive industry, we spend, consumed our 50, 60 years. This is the incentive. This incentive seems very attractive. However, there should be a time for this. For all the hydrothermic centrals or plants, uh, wind energy plants, you have to put the prerequisite for 50%. After you put this, how will you allocate and get this, provide this local content? There should be a password for this. I am giving $95 billion for you for investment, and the half of it $47.5 billion. If I add up all this, 
I will be getting billions of investments to Turkey. This should be the way it is. This is one of the solutions. Otherwise, it's going to be just a, this, uh, just a misperception. You have to make the design and production by yourself. If you are not producing, your list among all the countries, your rank will be in the same position. Ten years ago, the United States was the first country. If we go um, a further in the past, the Britain or the Germany was stronger. Right now, China and Japan, they are stronger. If you are strong in production, your rank in the list will become higher as well. For that reason, when we look at the electricity turbines, all the projects are coming from the offset. However, this is not your material. You cannot be dominant over this. You can only make the maintenance or care over these materials. If you want to be among top ten, you have to design and produce your components and products yourself. When we look at the foreign public procurements, 50% offset implementation will give $30 billion benefit to the country. Let's come to the national wind energy project. This was born in Oste uh, with the collaboration of Sabancı University. Tayi designed the blades. Istanbul Ulaşım AŞ uh, regulated the energy and then there is the Tubitak. It was we, we are in charge of installation and erection. So this is a public investment project. It, we prepared the loads of paperwork, and thank God we didn't give up. The, this is the power. The 500 kilowatts is the power of the project. Blade length is 21.5. Tower height, rotor uh, diameter, blade circulation, total nacelle weight including blades 30 tons and nominal wind speed is 19.5 uh, seconds. Here is the tower design. Here, what you see here, this is all the designs you see here and all the components you see here, they can be manufactured in Turkey. Our design team consists of 35 people, and uh, eight people in Tai have uh, made the aerodynamic designs of the blades and the composite studies. Who's going to do the manufacturing? Because this is a long corridor and there's a relevant process. We have agreed with a Turkish company and we are working together with them. After the design group, we move on to the mechanical systems. Uh, the connection of the blades. I cannot show. Do you have a laser laser pointer? Anyone? Th that is called the hub. And then there is the shaft. There is the gearbox. And these designs are by the Sabanja University, but there was the Istanbul Technical University in the correction of the electronic parts. And in the lower parts, uh, Yildiz Technical University, five or six people worked, and they are doing the shaft and the hub designs. And when we were designing each component, the fabrication, because that is a cast it is difficult to process it. And that piece uh, by three or four companies, it was done in a gearbox plant. And the alternator, uh, we will be using Gamak brand alternator, which is a local design and local make. And that, those parts, the, it's, uh, these are done, the underneath black parts, they are done in a casting and processing plant. This is not. This does not have any scales. This is just a concept design, and you see the brake system here. It's hydraulic brake. You see the gray gearbox with uh, plenary uh, stages. This is how we completed our design. And in the coming days, uh, I will between the design group and the manufacturing group in order not to encounter any problems in the interfaces and in order to be able to control 
the process. We need a control operation. Then we will proceed. There is a very important when you operate the turbine, everyone will expect a Mercedes from us, something that operates in a super manner without any failures. That is not possible. Of course, it will run, but Mercedes, they were born 120 years ago, but the Germans started the wind turbines in 1970s, and in 1977, for a wind turbine of 100 kilowatts, they spent 500 billion German marks, and the plant didn't work. And there were fractures, there were fires, there was overheating, ice breaking, etc. We all have photographs to prove it. Until the present, uh, Germany's uh, adventure lasted for 40 years. But we want the best immediately, but that is not possible. In terms of public procurement, when you go with a research and development project, they tell you to go to the tender immediately. You cannot. You have to first prepare the company. When you go to the Western countries, the models, either the ministries or the municipalities, they first invite their own state authority or the municipality and they prepare the uh, research and design and they design it together or they make revisions and they follow it through to the very end for an automobile that runs on green energy the munich municipality uh, in order to prevent for hydrogen engines, they spent 15 billion, the Munich municipality. And the project, it was successful, but it wasn't affordable, so they just gave up on the project. But uh, the Turkish people do not have this mentality. They say, why don't I? They do not say, why don't I do the design? There was an affair by Izgi. All the uh, wind people, thermic people, energy plant, everyone was here. I ask people, what do you see? They say it's great. But uh, they say, how can you say it's great? Turkey is not in it, and no one can tell me anything. So the first solution here is offset, and second, design and manufacturing. If you cannot do that, otherwise you will send your children to make a living in China or Germany in the future. Thank you. I would like to thank uh, dear, uh, the dear professor for his valuable f uh, input. And now Mr. Ali Kemal Olu will be speaking. Uh, he is uh, a board member in Alkeg Ashe. On behalf of the Alke group, I am here today and I would like to give information about the sector activities and we have expectations uh, about the sector. And as the Alke group, we are construction based, uh, we are a construction based company and this has been attracting our attention and we have invested significantly and we have long experience and deep established experience in construction and manufacturing and we s entered this sector in the year 2006 and we can proudly say that we have become, a, we are one of the manufacturers known worldwide and uh, our company was, our group was founded in 1955 and uh, we have completed uh, many dif difficult and challenging projects and starting from 1995 we had investments in other areas like tourism industry and we actively entered the wind sector in the year 2006 and we worked on turnkey delivery uh, wind farm constructions. But we also saw that there was a serious 
lack of uh, supply uh, in this area. And in the year 2007, we started building blades and towers of wind turbines. Uh, and for that purpose, we built a plant which was commissioned by the end of 2008. And soon we saw that the capacity of the plant couldn't answer the growing needs of the sector. So we built yet another plant uh, in, again in Izmit. And we started continuing blade and tower manufacturing in two different plants. Uh, and we work with three shifts, 24 hours a day. And I can proudly say that in this sector, we are we are one, the number of independent manufacturers, it's uh, almost non-existent uh, that can, because we can uh, manufacture blades and towers. We started manufacturing blades in the year 2008, and we started selling to Japan, from Turkey to Japan. And this lasted until the year 2010. And uh, following the successful operation of the blades in Japan, uh, what we lacked was the references and that we received from Japan. And uh, we received that from GE. Uh, we entered a very challenging and burdensome te test process. We entered that process in the year 2000. 10 and uh, close to the end to, of that process with TPI composites we built a new strategic partnership the beginning of the year 2012 and now we are producing manufacturing it together with them in our Izmir Chile plant and uh, there are some details about our uh, composite blade uh, plant. It is located on 240,000 square meters with an indoor production area of 32,000 square meters. And our uh, yearly uh, capacity is 1,000 units. And right now we have 350 employees. As of the end of the year, we want 800 employees and 8,000 blades. One of the determining factors of the sector is logistics, because the blades that we manufacture, they are 48 meters long, and it's a single piece. So transporting it from one point to another is a significant issue. And in Izmir, uh, uh, when uh, that that was one of the determining factors for choosing Izmir because the biggest export, the biggest export uh, port is in Izmir uh, because you cannot carry them by land. And uh, Izmir port is at a 25 kilometer distance to our plant. And uh, we cover this distance with 60 meter blades without any problems. And uh, along with the advantage offered by the port, we, our target is the entire European market. And I can gladly say that we exported blades to Scotland, to Romania. And uh, uh, now we are focusing the rest of our production for the domestic market. But we receive a great demand from the entire world because this is a very sensitive sector and uh, there are it requires a very serious know-how uh, uh, you cannot see such manufacturers around the corner in any city and uh, the, you need serious references you need serious assessment uh, processes and then it is only then that you are granted a manufacturing license in the sector. We use state-of-the-art technology and uh, well-equipped and trained personnel, and it is entirely local production. In terms of qualified employees, there are serious problems both abroad in Turkey. So how many companies are there in Turkey that manufacture blades? And there is no sector that is similar to it. And the technology that we use here, no other sector uses it. So you cannot find plug-and-play employees. So uh, 
We have to dedicate all our labor. Uh, we had to train them all, and we had to start from scratch for all of them. A majority of the components are from Turkey, but some still are imported because they, the raw material producers need to be accredited as well. And we are continuing our efforts to ensure accreditation for our raw material suppliers as well, because the more there are, the better it is for us. And steel tower uh, fabrication. Uh, we started uh, steel tower uh, production two and a half years ago, and the steel pipes with large diameters, we didn't have that experience. And we had a certain background, and comply, uh, complete, uh, complementing it with qualified labor, we commissioned our tower production plant. Here are some figures. It is on an indoor production area of 15,000 square meters. And uh, there we have a stock area of 30,000 square meters. And we've got 130 employees. And the highest towers used in wind uh, power plants are by us. Uh, they're 105 meters long. And uh, there are some photographs from our tower construction, tower manufacturing, again in three shifts and 24 hours. And we sell to the domestic market as well as uh, the foreign and international markets. And our targets our target is to increase our capacity in this area as well to easily respond to the increasing demand of the sector. Like I said, as Alke company, the wind energy sector was uh, the, the, the idea was to uh, complete turnkey projects for wind farm constructions. Although it appears like our focus has shifted towards uh, manufacturing, we are actually a construction company, so this is how we work mostly. You see our plants locations on the Izmir map. The tower is in the middle and the port is on the right and the blade production is on the left. They are all in Chile area and the steel tower is in organized industrial zone, but they are all located on the new motorway, highway. So in terms of transportation and loca uh, logistics, we have significant advantages. Here we see the uh, Turkish wind atlas. The red areas are the heaviest in terms of wind speed, and they are all located in the western side. And this is where our plant is located, where it is most favorable in terms of wind density. So it uh, demonstrates how favorable the location of the plant is. And let's talk about the uh, advantages of the sector and our expectations from the public uh, entities. Now, this is an environmentally friendly sector. It's a labor intensive sector with no impact on the environment. And we all know how environment friendly it is. I said it is uh, labor intensive because there is manual labor. So it has major contributions to employment. And in terms of exports and positive contributions to the current deficit, the sector brings many pluses. Because if you don't buy them in the domestic market, you need to import them. So by you are actually channeling these funds to the Turkish manufacturers, which help uh, make the uh, current deficit lower. And let me talk about our expectations. Like I have mentioned earlier, 
the sector and in terms of logistics, in terms of transportation infrastructure, the sector has serious needs and uh, expectations. So the manufacturing and fabrication investments will be focused on the West because both transportation infrastructure and qualified employment and wind farms, they are located at the West. So investments will also focus on the western regions so uh, the regional incentives specified in the incentive law will not be afforded to our sector and uh, in the strategic sense and in the sector sense we need if we receive any some incentives we will it will uh, it will be further accelerated and uh, it will help the uh, sector a lot. And uh, there are certain open points in terms of uh, regulation, certain criteria that are difficult to Im implement because we know that new investors, when they are investing, they still have question marks in their minds about these regulations. There are certain issues that are not yet clear, and the public authority if they collaborate with the private sector and if they can take act fast action, the target of 2023, we believe it is possible, it can be achieved, uh, 20,000 gigawatts of installed power target. Both blades and towers and the independent components, certain criteria have been set so that they can be considered as local manufacturing. But there are certain impossibilities. For instance, blade production, 100% input, 100% uh, local input is required by the, uh, by the regulations, but this is not possible. For instance, balsa, that is glue, it is not possible because that comes from a tree that grows in Ecuador. So you cannot grow that tree in Turkey. You have to import it. That's a very small example. But for instance, steel tower manufacturing, the steel that we use, we import that steel because we cannot find steel plates of those dimensions and those thicknesses. No company manufactures that. So can you give a percentage for inputs and can you not regard it as local production? Then that law cannot be enforced or implemented. So we believe it should be revised and as the representative of a private sector, both towers and blades, because these are manufactured in Turkey, we are ready to do our best, both in terms of documentation and hard work. We are ready to give support, information, documents, but the incentive that is prepared should help improve uh, the sector and also should be a support for the sector. Thank you for listening. Good afternoon. Dear participants, I have to go to catch my fly, but I have to make an evaluation. With regards to these wind turbines, they are located in Turkey, basically. That's why they construct them in Turkey. You know, steel construction is very heavy. They are built in Turkey, and shipment and transportation is very hard. That's why they are done in Turkey. Without any incentive, the foreigners, they want to do this. We do need for this friends, but I want to add certain things to your evaluations. If you issue offset law, many things can be done, but let all these things aside, even without issuing an offset law, even if it is all fully local content with a design, it takes 40% of this. We can make all of this from the design to the construction in a local content. Actually, the thing that they have done is not something. We are spending our money to the foreign sources. There is no gain in Turkey. The policy should be changed in Turkey. First step is offset. And the second thing is that this kind of meetings, the session should not be in the last parts of the Congress. This should be the first and basic sessions of all the Congress, we need to teach 
train all the Turkish industrialists how that they can do this. While we are doing this, they are doing the same things as well. Thank you so much for your participation and attention. Dolayısıyla diğer konuşmacıları da şimdi alacağım. Ben e, Sayın Kemaloğlu'na da verdiği bu değerli bilgilerden dolayı. Her Thank you so much for this valuable presentation. Even if we cannot completely make all this um, presentation productions, but they have a very serious potential and they are very successful. He mentioned this, but I want to congratulate them. Mr. Sadat has a very holistic approach to this business. However, you need to start and slowly but surely you can go into a full escape. And we have another guest coming from Dratec company. He was born in Istanbul in 1977. He graduated from Austrian high school in 2000. He studied in Purim University. And in 2008, he made and completed his doctorate in Yıldız Technical University Mechanical Engineering Department, Epoxy and Polyurethane Systems are his domains in Duratek and he knows English and German. Hello everyone, my name is Kerem Paksoy and I will make a presentation as a raw material producer coming from Duratek and these are a short and brief information about our company. We, was, we were founded in 1973 we were actually a representation company. We started to manufacture and produce raw materials with the license of German company, and this was the first in Turkish history, and we have still the same um, property in Turkey. Since 1998, with regards to PU and proxy, we are an independent producer. In 1980, Dretek was founded because while you are providing raw material, you have to give know-how and we use know-how for ourselves and we founded our Dretek company. Dretek and Paxo chem Chemistry, if we integrated these two companies together, we can see this is an integration in terms of production. We do have raw material and design of the raw material, and also we do have transformation of the raw material to the system, adaptation of the raw material to the system. There are certain active projects, and with these projects I would like to mention uh, what are we doing. You can see Chatala's thermic plants done by Eran Company coating of water areas, underwater and above water areas, and all the steel constructions are coated with the corrosion drabble paintings. This is a project uh, related to construction. In Marmaris Bosbrun, we are constructing the wood, the biggest, the longest wood boat in the world, and adhesives and um, lamination resins are our raw materials, and paintings, resins, pastes are going to be included in this project as well. We will be working uh, with these materials. The system that you can see, all the materials are inflammable, and they are delaying the fire. If there is a fire, they are not exhaling any toxic, toxic gas. These features are certified by independent 
certification company. All the coatings, all the floors of our war uh, marines are coated with this system. You can see we are very assertive in our projects. Another assertive project is epoxy-based lamination resins and guns, resin glues. Manufacturings were done in Turkey and it was certified in Miller's projects. Our materials were certified by Turkish aerospace institution. Izmir, Antalya, Adana, Gebze, organization, Gebze organized industrial zone. We do have certain brands in other cities as well. As, as a local raw material producers, I would like to give my opinion, but we do have a short clip. This is very fast, actually, but you can see this shows how a wind turbine works. Wind is blowing and blades are turning over and kinesthetic energy is becoming and it's transformed to an energy, electricity energy, and it is submitted to local usage. You can see the parts of a turbine, very basic, basic part and tower. It's not very important. I can uh, explain it from here if you cannot manage to do uh, work it out. You can see gearbox and blades, basic part, tower and blade and other parts you can see. If I want to repeat it, you can see blades, generator and power electron electronic parts and rotor and nasal groups, mechanic parts. I want to focus on blades because our products are more uh, related to blades. Blades, as you all know, Mr. Rahn has mentioned before, this is a composite part. It has different physical feature uh, components inside it and it is the composite parts are becoming together with two different physical materials. We can say cement is and concrete is the composite material that we come across in our daily lives. Let's look at blade. Blade, we can use uh, fiber, glass fiber and carbon fiber. They are transmitted, they transmit the input. There are certain epoxy resins. You can, in concrete, as epoxy resins, we use cement. Right now, composite producers are using different materials. This can be PVC, um, PVC foams and other materials. So, do you have a laser point here? We can see the outside of the laser, we can see certain fibers laminated by epoxy and inside of the blade we can see fiber epoxy uh, parts. Some companies don't want to use it and some want to use it more. Blade manufacturers manufacture blades within two sides. There are also some companies who want to pr produce it in a single part. You can think it like a shelf cover. They become together when you uh, adhere it with a glue. This is a composite blade system. I don't want to go into detail very much. You can come and um, visit our booth. There are different manufacturing methodologies, and you can see laminate parts are composite parts. They can be defined as blade parts and composite parts. In a blade, as we mentioned before, raw materials that we use, the usage average. Of course, these values can be different, but this is just an overall figure. It does not differentiated between themselves very much. Uh, glass fiber, it is approximately 4,400 and it has 61%. Epoxy laminated raisins and glues, 35%, and the other uh, composites and coatings are 4%. When we add up to the cost, it is 40, 40 and 20% each. 
These ratios may display, demonstrate differences depending on the manufacturer. And when we look at the total cost of the blade, the raw material constitutes 55 to 60 percent, and the remaining would be labor and other expenses. Now, let's look once again uh, at the raw materials. When you use epoxy resin as a raw material, uh, Duratec is used and glass fiber is uh, by the uh, carbon fiber by Dovaxa and the core is being not, they are not manufactured, core is not manufactured in Turkey, but the system fabric and the processing is done by Metix. Uh, they can slice it depending on the. So back to our famous regulations, and the regulations say that the four parts, they list the four parts that I have mentioned, and they separate it into integral parts, and the integral parts are given certain ratios. And if you can find 55%, you are deemed a local company and you receive the relevant incentives, right? So, yeah. In appendix, this is appendix one of the regulations, and the paragraph, the paragraph I mentioned is related, is, is since the reader refers the reader to the appendix one, you see blades, generator, power, electronics, rotor, nasal, and tower, and the subsequent in, uh, integral parts. But when you look at the blade portion, portion the new regulation does not offer many uh, integral parts, just one. But. Uh, we have proven that it can be, there are raw materials that can be produced locally. And uh, the ratios are quite significant. For instance, glass fiber and epoxy resin, the two together, their weight constitutes approximately 90% or even 95%. And the cost remains at around 80%. I'm talking about raw material costs. But these raw materials are not not included in regulations. In my belief, there is a conflict there because we are talking about a local make automobile. We are talking of engines, transmission, the manufacturing of many things. But when you look at the uh, by uh, products industry of the energy sector. They, these are not given as incentives, or there's another reason, maybe Mr. Sabatin will give the explanation for that. But the, region, the reason for aftermarket for the energy sector, uh, Mr. Ayhan already mentioned about that in terms of current, because it will help make up the current deficit. I want to give an example from the automotive aftermarket. According to TISAT data, in June 2011, automobile aftermarket constituted 42% of the total exports, whereas the main activities constituted 58%. And when you look at the first six months of uh, 12, uh, the year 2012, you can look at the chart on the right. And uh, there's an other important data. In the accord, when you compare it with the first six months of 2012, the exports of the main industry re was read down by 6%, and the aftermarket activities increased by 3%. I will go faster. So what do we understand here? The aftermarket is necessary is needed as much as the main industry. We had talked about employment and uh, d developing a main industry that is dependent on foreign countries will lead to current deficit. We will be transferring our resources abroad. And uh, certain factors such as cost, efficiency, we are trying to take them into account. And like as always, 
if you if it is accompanied by an aftermarket main industry will have lower costs and higher efficiency uh, the aftermarket can it be as strong as the automotive industry of course uh, the figures are very high but there's a target of 20 billion but if the 50 20 gigabytes but if 50 percent takes one megawatt equals one billion dollars so we are talking about a market of 10 billion dollars this is just for wind energy for the next 10 years we will be investing our country will be investing 10 billion dollars and when you look at the entire sector we are talking about 95 billion dollars for the next 10 years let me wrap it up the main industry be considering the local investment and the foreign investment we need to create we believe it will be better to have a gradual incentive system to support the aftermarket as well because you can offer x percent incentives for investors and for people for those that use extra raw materials you can offer more incentives etc thank you very much we would like to thank Mr. Kerem Paksoy and now our last uh, speaker, Mr. Sabahattin Öz. He is uh, coming from the General Directorate of Renewable Energy. He is the head of that department. It is a good thing that you are the last speaker because this, those before who spoke before you, uh, there are some criticisms uh, from them. So I believe that in your presentations you will have the opportunity to answer to those criticisms and to conclude them. Thank you very much. In my speech, I was thinking of focusing on legislation, but the other speakers summarized the legislation anyway, and I don't want to make you too tired as the last speaker. Maybe we can give more time for the question and answer session. We have this renewable energy uh, law, 5346, and Article 6C stipulates that the products the domestic, they should be supported in the extent of their domestic origin and their procedures and principles and the standards and how it should be implemented. These regulations will be issued by the ministry and the law of 5346, uh, the, the law amending that uh, passed, uh, became effective in the beginning of 2011 and the relevant article uh, stipulates that it, uh, the, the, the regulations would have been issued three months later, but with some delay, it was published and it became effective in, the, in June 2011. These regulations, this was never enforced. It couldn't have been enforced since day one. Now, as the public authority, you issue regulations. You say you will hand out money, but no one applies to you. There were certain debates, discussions. There are four panelists, maybe with the professor as well. I don't remember. But I remember that I have talked to Paksoy, and I have talked to Ayhan's father, Ali Kemaloğlu. So, there are uh, bosses, plant owners, general managers, whoever is engaged in this, involved in this, we talk to them, we ask them why they don't apply to us. And this was the reaction. They said that the regulations that I was talking about, they, this these regulations would be applicable for components which were manufactured domestically by 100%. So in order for you to be able to benefit from those incentives, it had to be 100% local manufactured. And manufacturer, let's say Mr. Kemaloğlu, who manufactures blades, he said it's not 
possible for me to get all the uh, uh, components, even if I got everything, balsa uh, tree, it uh, grows at f plus or minus five uh, degrees close to the Ecuador, so it has to be brought from there. So they said they cannot do it or at least for the time being technologically, in terms of feasibility, in terms of economy, there are, so this was the issue. No one could benefit from these incentives because it, there, there was a requirement of 100% local content. So we debated a lot and we thought, uh, we came up with certain figures like 55%, 50%, 60%, like our professors did. Could these parts, uh, uh, what is the percentage in the makeup of the product? And uh, the regulations we are talking about, it is not about supporting wind energy plants, but we are talking about the sector in general, renewable energy. In the year 2005, there were no regulations. Okay, we had laws and we had regulations, but we didn't have special practices on a resource basis. But when we talk about renewables, we could be talking about solar cells, photovoltaic cells, or wind cells, wind uh, energy. You have to to treat them in the same regulations, which is not possible because they are all different disciplines. So the problem, in order to be able to overcome the problem that we faced back down, we came up with that figure of 55%. Like Mr. Kemal Oğlu, he didn't read the, most probably the final uh, edition of these regulations. So if you can uh, produce 55% of it locally with added value, then that is deemed as a local uh, manufacture. And if the law gives you one Turkish lira cents, you receive 55% of it, and vice versa. You receive in this, OK, 44% is not allowed. Okay, but if, if it's 44%, you cannot get any incentives. But why is it 55%? Let's say it's a psychological limit. So if you're doing half of it local, it is acceptable local. But in, initially, it was 100%. So we came down to this figure from 100%. The first idea was, in the first regulations, was to have 100% local. But the current regulation, th this is not, the percentage is not our problem, but you may, you might be wondering why we changed the regulations. Because these regulations that we were talking about, we changed them this year, July 26th, and we published it, imposing this 55% requirement. It is a very short one, and we need two things. One is the investor to apply for the incentives, and we, we want two things. One, local manufacturing status certificate to be prepared by a chartered accountant, and actually, it's the Ministry of Economy and the Ministry of Industry. And with the Chamber of Chartered Accountants, we have asked the opinions of all parties. And PSE also can do it. But in terms of trusting the market, we are having chartered accountants prepare these. And we also check the capacity report. For instance, okay. Uh, if they if their capacity can produ uh, is to produce 1000 blades per year the izmir chamber of industry approves it and there are no sanctions nothing is being imposed it is just we are asking the chartered accountants to do some extra work and they earn money and we hold them accountable because they check the plans they examine the invoices and they uh, certify they prove to us that that blade is manufactured in the Izmir Chile plant. This is the first requirement, and it's very easy to obtain it. There are 14 applications, and they have all been granted, so there are no problems in the 55% or in obtaining that document. And then there's a second document, and it, it, the one is the Turkish Standards Institute. It has 45511 product certification uh, authorization. It is authorizing the entities that certify products. Uh, so accreditation by national or international companies is required for the parts, the compliance of the, 
we require a product certificate showing that the, there is compliance with the international or national standards, and we didn't even modify, not even one word. International Turkish Lloyd or uh, German Lloyd institutions, we corresponded with them in order to provide it, and clearly the decree was that it was right, and there was no incentive for this. It was valid in the previous regulation because of that reason. If it was 100 percent, all the sectors said that this would not be successful, solar, wind, and other sector areas, they did not make and they did not send any feedback to us. There were no feedbacks coming from them. Unfortunately for today, as you all know, in the 31st October for 2013, for the ones who want to get benefit of the renewable energy code and for the new integral parts, they had to apply to us and 14 plants applied to us and uh, most of them are uh, hydrothermal and two other ones, uh, the natural gas. For the wind applications, in terms of certification, we did certain problems. We couldn't provide any certificates to them for the last two thermic plants, there were certain insufficiencies in terms of locality and um, domestic manufacturing certificates. Actually, we gave more time to them. We exceeded the time. Unfortunately, we could not get two certificates from these uh, uh, applications. There is no company who are supported from local domestic product incentive. As this is the code, this is the law, this was issued. We have to adapt it to our sector. This is the sector. In order to improve and enhance it, there is a demand from the public. But to be honest, there is no uh, pushing effect coming from the public. This is something which was done by the ministries itself. They did not record request any support from the public or from the industry and the ministry did itself. There are certain insufficiencies, lacking points, and by talking to the sector players, uh, if we did not visit you or We visit certain facilities which can be deemed as example facilities. We are visiting them and we talk about what can we do. Of course, we all know the sector is very big. It has expanded itself, but there are different things that we can hear from this meeting. We are talking about 55 percent. They say 55 is very big and someone is saying that why you are not supporting the local sector. You have to open your arms to all sector. You have to support the raw material. Local market is not, is not working because we are dependent on raw material in terms of production, in terms of blade manufacturing, for instance. If you ask the blade manufacturers, they say I cannot fully comply with the locality, pro, uh, locality standards. All the sector requirements and meeting these needs is not very possible with the current situation. Maybe these regulations will be specified in the near future. Maybe there is going to be a new sector regarding to wind because the sector is triggering us to specify the sectors. But we cannot expect to make all of this in one single step. If we are producing blade from a manufacturing company, because the manufacturing styles are different, they are heating some raw materials and they are producing the uh, blades. It is not very possible to install or manufacture blades in the same uh, process, but in a hydrothermic 
plants, you can manufacture different materials. There are certain handicaps, and we need to overcome those obstacles. If you have any questions, I will extend my opinions by answering your questions. I will give the floor to you, but just for a second, I want to thank and congratulate you dear panelists, because in a very short and limited time, they gave very valuable information to us. That's why we'll go into Q&A session. And that's COP. Let's get a very brief evaluation. If there are some ones who want to ask questions, we can uh, pass the microphone to them. Esteemed participants, actually, I talked very briefly in my presentation. I don't have any company. I am coming from university. I'm an academician. I'm not selling anything. I am not trying to sell something or I'm saying this 55 is very low for the sake of my own interest. Actually, the two uh, neighbors in this room sitting next to me, they have to say this or they have to cry. Why this is 55 percent? I want to congratulate my friend who has talked before. He said that there is no one who get use of this incentive because they could not complete the requirements of the certification. Actually, we have to congratulate him. This regulation is not successful. This has not been carried out, and it's not going to be successful with 100 percent and with 55 percent. It's not going to be um, certified and successful. What is balsam? What is balsam tree? What does it mean? Because of that reason, you cannot put a label. This is local or not. Every single part should be local and it should be certified with the local produced verification. If there are some obscure uh, contents or some words, you cannot solve this problem. I'm an electrical and electronic engineer in Middle East Technical University. When you open an electrical material, you cannot see fully the same domestic materials. Even if you can open this uh, laptop, you will see some Chinese materials. The important thing is that whether it is durable, it is serving my necessities. We do have certain uh, errors in some points. Let's say that a product. I, actually, there is no point in putting an obligation to make the design and the production and fully. The most important thing is that you have to keep your money inside your own territory. The thing is that you have to diminish or decrease the uh, current deficit. For instance, uh, let's talk about red Turkish flag. By putting Turkish flag in tur turbines, no one will affect you. If the workers in Austin organize industrial zone, if they want to uh, advocate themselves, this regulation should advocate their rights. If they make 5% production or if they make 2% production, you have to give 2%. They are producing materials, secrets. It's, it, it's not very... Um, it is not something that you can disregard. You cannot improve a product by getting different academicians or different universities or big companies together. You cannot improve or develop a, a product. I am a professor coming from university. I can say this. Let's come together. We do have many big, great laboratories and different experts and people coming from United States. I can create attraction, but overdose of science can kill you, like chemistry, like the medications. Uh, what does this industry do? They produce, they manufacture, they sell, they increase their revenue, so they expand, they m make their companies become bigger. All the companies, all the 
products, all the things that we produce in Turkey, we can say they are local, they are Turkish, if, it, if it's Siemens or not. It's not the thing that we need to focus on, let's make the design fully domestic. What does it mean? Why 55%? No one can explain it. Why it's not 51 or 90, uh, 49? It is 55. Why? Because I wanted it to be 55. The thing is that draft of the legislations, the drafts of the laws, we have to be actively engaged in the preparation of the drafts, not after the drafts has been uh, drawn. We have to be active in the process of this preparation process. Let's say that, except this, you have an objection period for 15 days. Sector, including the academy, they have to be inside the room of the drafts preparation place. Now, among the panelists, there could be certain conflicts or discussions, and there could be right to answer. We actually exceeded our time, but we are open to your questions for one or two questions. Rather than comments, we can accept some questions. And please, can you introduce yourself and institutions and the one that you are addressing your questions? Please, can you pass the microphone? Because I couldn't see you. Yes, you can ask your question. Uh, good evening. My name is Halid. I'm coming from Ankara IC construction company. I graduated from Middle East Technical University, and I worked in Turkish Aerospace Institution. And I also know Alke before I interviewed with them previously. My question will be this. In the session, previous session, Mr. Erol has said this. The unit price is $7.13 in this market, in the sector. I think in the hydroelectricity plants, there is a free uh, market, which is approximately 9 or $10 cent. Nazam, Gairel, they are the leading parts. In order to increase the $9, you have to come back four steps and go back two steps further. And when Alke uh, produces, they still remain below the market prices. So I don't think there's a significant incentive or a contribution there. I think a study needs to be carried out there. And uh, finally, I would like to tell to Mr. Ask a question to Mr. Sabatin. Mr. Hilmi Temsan, general manager, had a presentation about hydroelectricity turbines. And the Turkish Standards Institute cannot provide the productivity cert production certificates, and we have asked it the acceptability to Bureau Veritas and other companies, and there are no companies that can provide those certificates. So in hydroelectricity, there is no company that can offer it. And we are hoping that the incentives will be increased, particularly the contributions. Uh, as uh, local investors, like Mr. Errol said, either the electricity will come from that price and every material or component will add the additional contribution. These are all possible options. This is all I can say. Uh, these can be offered as solutions. Uh, Mr. Sabatin, can you shortly answer them? Now, the Tamsun issue is long. But the hydroelectricity plant turbines manufactured by Tamsun-like companies, we have this product certificate, which is not a clear definition. And it doesn't have to be in that same definition. The standard TSI uh, uh, it, and in seven of them, uh, I tell it verbally, I tell it in writing. We are going to reduce it, and we have time to change the regulations. And maybe 
we are going to write a special expression there. And as for incentives, we are talking about renewable energy resources mechanisms. And if that figure 7.3 is cheaper from the, compared to the market prices, two things can be done there. Either they have served their purpose and their resources can compete with the market and they do not need it anymore and they, they can sell it in the market for a higher price and in that case the yekdem mechanism needs to be revised and this needs to be put on the table to be reviewed then uh, there, there's a question there the gentleman in the front and then to the lady <coughs> I would like, I am uh, Selçuk Paksoy from Duratek. I have two questions. You said, Mr. Sabahattin, that uh, wind energy, solar energy, thermal energy, etc. All these uh, will be covered by our regulations. One addresses the measures taken but maybe that measure may not be applicable for the other alter, other energy resource. But if you are thinking of placing them all in one bowl, in one tank, in that case, it will not be possible to find a solution. So you need to treat wind as wind and solar as solar and geothermal energy as geothermal. And you have to look at them all separately. Otherwise, you cannot manage it. And the other question is, if I'm not mistaken, the other would be to make use of the, the local contribution. For instance, in terms of blade, in order to be regarded as 100%, uh, you need to buy local components. But because of the balsa component, it is not 100%. But balsa is something that is minimal. You know, we are making a storm over balsa. It is, it is something tiny. It wouldn't exceed 5%, maybe 9%. But for 10%, we are worried about blades. But the blade in a wind turbine, blade has the highest participation share contribution. But all of a sudden, balsa has the uh, limelight. But let me tell you this. We, as local producers, we are uh, directly affected and impacted. And the, the blade manufacturers also have their own uh, manufacturing, but who are you encouraging there? The blade manufacturers or the aftermarket? Are, do, are you neglecting them, or do you not want to provide incentives for the aftermarket? Because that is the conclusion I receive. Uh, let's say if I'm a blade manufacturer or an alternator manufacturer, and if I bring everything from abroad, and if I combine them both com chemically or by installation, then my name, my name is a local manufacturer, but the aftermarket guy that gives me my input, he's not taken into account. And what kind of a conflict is that? That this is not acceptable. Thank you. So rather than comments, I am going to accept. I'm going to accept questions. So because there will be short answers for long questions, we talked with uh, Mr. Selchuk. If you will remember, uh, uh, we told you that we need to take the resources treat them differently. But uh, for instance, in 2005, April or May, that was when the law was passed. And we had no regulations ever until that year. We had an independent law talking about renewable energy resources. And that was governing that. And we had three, four, or five regulations, whatever. But that was our core. This is the course that we will 
follow. We need to be specific for wind, for solar, and there is also one more thing. If you do not know the technology and if you do not implement it, If you, it is not easy for you to prepare regulations or adjustments, and then it becomes all very vague. Whenever we discuss with you about these matters, then these are matured. And I talked about balsa in the beginning. That is a very absurd example. It was just for the sake of giving an example. We encounter many other strange examples. It, let's proceed with the blade examples. The raw material manufacturers, when they are supplying, when they supply materials to the raw, to the blade company and the turbine, you need to be accredited with the turbine producers. So the material that you produce could be Destas, Nordic, whatever. They have to you have to receive permission to buy from that supplier because it has to comply with the standards that they will set. This is the kind of system they created because the guy says, that is my turbine and I will intervene in the euro materials you buy. So we have this kind of a system. So no matter how much incentives you offer, because you will not be selling them to the blade guys only because you can support other manufacturing methods as well. But imagine, uh, e even if you are a supplier for only a turbine or a blade manufacturer, then you will not exist. I'm not an industry guy, so I don't know if it's the main industry or the aftermarket. They need to be supported. So if, if it is not, if it is the same quality, wouldn't they buy it? Of course they would buy it because that is how the automotive industry started surviving. In the in Bursa, for instance, there were no aftermarkets. First, the, side, the, the main industry came, and then the others emerged around it. You know, this is the only explanation I can offer for that. But what is supported here is that the purpose of the product support, maybe I need to summarize it with two sentences. Uh, there's a serious current deficit. Uh, try, we shouldn't increase this current deficit trying to expand the renewable energy sources. We should also increase the know-how. It shouldn't be regardless German or Turkey Siemens or whatever. Now, the, once they build a factory in Turkey, they are local, they are Turkish in our re, opinion. We don't care about the origin. It, what matters is to be manufactured here. But at least we shouldn't have that in installation, ex, at least. Final two questions. We have exceeded our limit. I, I want to... The, a majority of what I wanted to ask were asked. The product certificate is required by the Turkish Standards Institute. I would like to ask Sabahattin Öz and the blade manufacturers. You said 12 wind energy companies applied, but they couldn't bring the second document, second certificate. Is it possible to obtain that document? And why couldn't the blade manufacturers provide and come up with that document, for instance? Is it not possible? So if that cannot be obtained, then those regulations need to be revised uh, because the sector is huge. But they didn't receive any other, uh, like biomass, biogas. We, we, we need to start with hydroelectricity and wind to correct them. Thank you. I will try to answer very shortly and briefly because there were certain criticisms previously why this draft is uh, prepared, why didn't the sector players went, go to this uh, preparation process? Because normally the turbine manufacturers are the ones who need to go to the investors because we are not talking with the investors and this is our product, you need to go and apply. Normally, the tur turbine uh, manufacturer can come to us and buy our products and they are going to investors. We are not very actively engaged in the preparation process. The reason for this is that normally the 
investor should be engaged in this part. And they, we thought that this could be more effective in terms of explaining why this should be in a different draft process. But when it comes to your question, actually we just started to produce blades, the many blade products. Normally, we were producing blades and we were sending them to Japan. This year, we sent 23 blades to uh, Scotland and we sent 24 blades to Romania, but these are not local productions, actually. But if you ask me whether these are local production, I cannot answer to this one, because we have just started to produce our blades in a local manner. Normally, they say that if you give the certificates to us, we will handle the rest of it. Because you have said 12 uh, wind turbine manufacturers, who are these people? And why did not get this required certificates? If they cannot get the certificates, we need to change the amendments. But if they are eligible to get the certificates, but they are in failure with this. We need to look at the problem in a different perspective. Maybe this application was not for the blades, it was for the towers. Thank you so much for your questions, but we have exceeded our time very much. For that reason, uh, as you all know, our speakers are here, and the ones who want to ask questions, they are also here. Maybe after the session, you can ask your specific and private questions in a detailed manner. But we can listen to your opinion. In the morning, it was said, and the previous session, I tried to explain it. Yek, the renewable energy resources or the energy sold by renewable energy, the kilowatt per hour, it is 10 or 11, per 11 cent. It is always said, normally it is higher from the market prices. Yes, it is higher, but when you uh, exclude the imbalance situation here, you can have the reasonable amount. I have heard this. As far as I know, three companies until 21st of October, they have applied to renewable energy resource mechanism. Because of this information, I made a mis-evaluation, and that's why it shouldn't, it should be corrected, I think. Actually, I was about to say a similar thing. We cannot accept any question. I want to conclude the session and close the session. On behalf of the organization, I would like to thank all the panelists, without a doubt all the interested areas from the industry, from the investors, from the public authority, they have written all the necessary notes down. And in the next meetings, this kind of problems will be discussed. And I hope better solutions will be reached. This is my hope. And I am one of the optimistic ones. Thank you so much. Good evening again.